Hey everybody, I thought I would uh, <clears throat> give a little intro into the minor league project that I just completed the player cards for. It's for the 2002 International League season, AAA. Uh, I've already done a couple of uh, startup videos just kind of as a practice to see how they play out. But now all the teams are created. At least for the most part, as if, you know, I didn't include every single player on every single team, but each team has you know roughly 25 to 30 players on it, um, so that uh, majority of the guys who got the majority of the playing time are on there. And for resources, uh, the, I actually was a season ticket holder in 2002 for the Richmond Braves season, so I was, you know this brought back a lot of memories for me. Uh, seeing just recreating these things and seeing the player names and back then I was really into the minor league baseball in fact as you can see I've got stacked here I've got the uh, media guides for all the teams um, so here we have Durham Bulls we have the Norfolk Tides Charlotte Knights and of course for Richmond I didn't need a media guide for them because I follow them all the time uh, that's the south division it's broken into three divisions south north and west in the West, it's the Indianapolis Indians, the Columbus Clippers, the Louisville Bats, and the only one I can't find in front of me for some reason is the Toledo Mud Hens, but it's around here somewhere. So that's the West Division. And in the North, you got the now defunct Ottawa Lynx, who were the Montreal Expos AAA team at the time. You got the Rochester Red Wings, who were the. Uh, um, I think this is the year they, they transferred over to the Twins from the Orioles. We have the Scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons. We have the Syracuse Sky Chiefs and the Buffalo Bison. So those are all the teams in that league. 14 team league. And I'll just kind of briefly show the player cards. Uh, we'll show the teams anyway how I have them set up. First we'll look at the North Division. And North Division, we have the Syracuse Sky Chiefs, and they are managed by Omar Malave. We have the Buffalo Bison, managed by Eric Wedge. We have the Rochester Red Wings, managed by Andy Etchbarren. As you've already seen, we've got the Pawtucket Red Sox, managed by Buddy Bailey. We have the Scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons, managed by Mark Bombard. And we have the Ottawa Lynx, managed by Tim Leeper. That's the North Division. In the West Division, there are six teams in the North, four teams in the other two divisions. So it's really, a, I take it back, it's a 14-team uh, league. I think I said 12. It's really a 14-team league. Four, we've got the Toledo Mud Hens, managed by Bruce Fields. We've got the Louisville Bats, managed by Dave Miley. We got the Columbus Clippers managed by Stump Merrill. In fact, they had three managers that year, but Stump Merrill started the year with them. And then the Indianapolis Indians managed by Dwight Bernard. Then in the South Division, you had the Norfolk Tides managed by Bobby Floyd. The Durham Bulls managed by Bill Evers. The Charlotte Knights managed by Nick Capra. And then the Richmond Braves managed by former Atlanta manager Freddie Gonzalez. So those are the players, uh, or the teams, I should say. And I'll pull out one of the, the players. Um, just so you can see, I try to do it in team colors as best I could. So for this one, for Indianapolis, the Indians, they're red and black. So I try to put the name in red and the team in black. And then one other side bit that I thought about doing, I don't, this might be a total waste of time, but I thought it could be interesting. And I don't think anybody's ever took the time to do this probably because they're not as anal as me but uh, and that's probably a good thing but it got to me thinking uh, what about home and road cards have home cards and road cards and so what I thought about doing all the cards are you know have this white background nice bright white background but suppose Toledo was going to go play at Indianapolis this would be Indy's home uniform and then we could put a, ba a gray background on Toledo's cards. And then you'd have the gray Toledo jerseys against the lighter Indianapolis jerseys. I might try that in a game once just for the heck of it, but it's probably a waste of time. But when you're experimenting and doing different things with this History Maker game, sometimes those wild ideas will come into your head. Um, 
Not only do I have the 2003 media guide, but I also have several of the 2002 media guides. So I got the Pawtucket Red Sox media guide from 2002, and that lists all the 2002 umpires, because a lot of the umpires I knew and a lot of them I didn't know. But this lists the umpires and even breaks them down into crews, at least the crews that played at that, that umpired at McCoy Stadium. So I've got the umpire cards right here. Um, the, the characteristics I just kind of fudged a little bit just to mix them up because I really don't know. Uh, I don't think any statistics were available back then for that kind of stuff. But it's just, it's just nice to have the uh, real names of the umpires um, because, you know, sometimes if, if you're like me and you followed that, that season, you kind of remember some of those uh, umpire names. Um, on some of my score sheets, I probably wrote down the umpires that were uh, umpiring that particular game, but uh, a lot of times I did not. So that's what's going on with that. Um, these are all Excel files that I created for each of these teams. Um, I'm not computer savvy, so I don't know exactly how to put this out to everybody so that you can get it. Uh, as far as like Google Drive and stuff like that, um, I, I might reach out to Keith and see if I can email him these uh, files that he can put on the play.com free site for anybody interested. I noticed that, you know, every once in a while they'll throw up a, a minor league set or uh, some set that, that homebrew that somebody has created. So I um, thought I would uh, try to do my part since I try to play this game quite a bit and feel like I'm invested in the game quite a bit. So that's my contribution, if you want to call it that. Um, if that doesn't happen, if somebody really is interested in this set, then certainly you know, shoot me a message uh, on the video or um, check out my Baseball Demos Facebook page and shoot me a message there. Uh, and I will be happy to uh, send you, it's, you know, like I said, it's 14 Excel files. I don't know how to, you know, like I said, they're all individual files per team. So that's the best I can do with it. But then once you get those files, they're editable. So you can go in and change the player ratings, change the color scheme. You can do, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do with it. But just thought I would throw that out there. And while we're doing that and discussing that, I thought I would go ahead and... Uh, play another game. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and set up the boards to play a game. I'm not sure what game I'm going to play yet. I just have to think about it for a second while I pause the video. Um, don't really want to play Richmond, Durham, Scranton, or Pawtucket because those four teams have already been presented. So I'll have to think of some other team. I probably will do Louisville and I'm not sure who the other team's going to be, but uh, we'll think it might be maybe, maybe I'll do a Buffalo Louisville um, game. We shall see. But I'm going to pause the video, set the game up, and then we'll see what we have in just a second. Okay, welcome to Upstate New York, as we are at Dun Tire Park in Buffalo for this game between the Louisville Bats and the Buffalo Bisons. The starting pitchers for today's game, first for Buffalo, is right-hander Jason Phillips. And for Louisville, the knuckleballer, right-hander Jared Fernandez. Let's meet the starting lineups, first for Louisville. Leading off in left field is Anthony Sanders. Batting second at shortstop is Jason Maxwell. Hitting third in center field is Raul Gonzalez. Batting cleanup, the DH, Kevin Witt. Hitting fifth at third base, Brandon Larson. Hitting sixth in right field, Ruben Mateo. Batting seventh at first base, Ben Broussard. Batting eighth at second base, Chris Sexton. And batting ninth and catching, Corky Miller. All right, let's meet the Buffalo Bison. Leading off and playing in center field is Anthony Madrano. Batting second, playing second base is Bill Selby. Hitting third, the DH, Earl Snyder. Batting cleanup in right field, Kareem Garcia. Hitting fifth at first base, Chris Coast. Batting sixth in left field, Bruce Avon. 
Batting seventh at third base is Greg LaRocca. Hitting eighth at shortstop is Zach Sorensen. And batting ninth, catching Tim Laker. Let's meet the umpires selected for today's game. Behind the plate is Bob Bainter. At first base is Justin Clem. Way over here at second base is Matt Hollowell. And at third is Stu Robertson. All right, one adjustment I'm going to make, it, when I was making these cards, it's really hard to determine who's an icon and who's a prospect since they're all in the minor leagues. So even though some of the cards may have that, what I'm going to do in this game is, if it comes to a experience uh, role, I'm just going to ignore that, or I could just make them all neutral and let it go from there. But I'm thinking I'm just going to ignore the uh, experience roles and just go to the regular chart on the next at bat. I think it's probably the most fair thing to do because we're, we are talking minor leagues, so there may be a few scattered guys that were former major leaguers that have been around a while that are hanging on by a thread, but for the most part, they're all prospects. So I just figured uh, why even go there? Um, might as well just play it as you know neutral and not even worry about it. I'm also not going to do a hot and cold player for the day's game. I'm with the game to engine determine that, and both teams are neutral heading into this game. All right, so hopefully this will be a closer game than the last one because in the last game, Scranton kind of took it to Pawtucket thanks to Marlon Bird's Grand Slam. So we'll try it this time and see what we do. Uh, Record-wise, both these teams had really good records. Uh, Louisville was 79-65. and 65. Buffalo was 87-57. and 57. Uh, so, you know, two pr pretty good teams there. Uh, Buffalo lost in the Governor's Cup final to Durham that year, and Louisville got beat out. Um, I believe Toledo beat them out for the division uh, win there. I didn't look it up. Don't have that information right in front of me readily, so I'm just going off memory. Okay, and that's not a good idea when it's 15 years ago, and my memory is not that great. But we'll carry on here with... Anthony Sanders, he is a left fielder leading things off in this game against Jason Phillips. And Jason Phillips does have that great quality of double control, so that might come into play for him down the road here. First pitch is 2-3-6, and what do you know? <laughs> is that prophetic or what? 2-3-6 would normally have been a walk, but the double control, it's a ground out to the pitcher and a ground out to the shortstop. So Sanders... He's going to ground back to Phillips for one out. And then, unfortunately, Jason Maxwell is going to ground to the shortstop, Sorensen, for out number two. And there's two quick outs, so obviously a great quality to have, that double control. Here's Raul Gonzalez. It's a 2-3-5 for Gonzalez. 2-3-5. Is he wild? No, he's got double control. Is the batter eager? No, he's semi-patient. So therefore, he's going to ground to second, but if he is fully patient, he will walk. But the desire die says no, so it's going to be a ground out to second. And Raul Gonzalez is gone, and so are the bats here in the top of the first. So we go to the bottom of the first. No score as Buffalo is getting ready to take their hacks. Jared Fernandez, the knuckleballer, is finishing up his warm-up tosses. And we've got... Center fielder Anthony Madrano to lead things off for the Bison. And we get a 2-3-4. I've rolled a 2-3-6, a 2-3-5, and now a 2-3-4. Interesting. Runners on base? Nope. Nobody's on base. He's not the hot batter, so he will pop it up to second base, or third base, rather. So it's a pop-up to Larson at third for one away. That'll bring up the second baseman, Bill Selby. That's a 4-5-6, so he finally got off the lead die of 2. 4-5-6 is blank for the pitcher. Is the batter patient? No, he's not patient, so he will fly to center. And that's out number 2. And we'll go ahead and go to the chemistry chart. Both teams neutral. Both teams are neutral. And where is my decider die? I just noticed I didn't... What did I do with that decider die? Let me pause the video because some reason or another my decider die has decided to, uh, pardon the pun, has decided to walk away. Okay, it fell on the floor unbeknownst to me. So <laughs> luckily it wasn't needed then. But right now Bill Selby uh, will be off the chemistry chart. 
I'm sorry, Snyder will be off the chemistry chart because Selby just made the out. So both teams are neutral on this chemistry chemistry roll. It's two six. Two six. Batting team harmony. No, they're not harmonious, so it would be a ground ball to second. Handled over there by Sexton. And the bison go down one, two, three. Played one inning here at Duntire Park, and we're scoreless. Start the top of the second for slugging. He's a semi-slugger and a semi-home run king, Kevin Witt. DH, cleanup hitter. And we get a 2-4-4. Four, four. So a 2-4-4. Four, four. Ask, is the pitcher an ace? No, he's a semi-star, but he's not an ace. He is the batter a champion. No, he's a, a semi-hero, but not a champion. So he'll ground a short unless he's a whiffer, which he happens to be. So Kevin Witt, Kevin Witt with that whiffer quality will strike out. So one away. Brings up third baseman Brandon Larson. Brandon Larson. His card is loaded. 266. 266. Six, six. Nobody's on base to get picked off. He's not the leadoff batter, so he will fly to right. Two up, two down. For right fielder Ruben Mateo. Mateo, one, two, six. That is a freshness check, and we're in the second inning, so he is fresh. It's a line out to second. And Louisville. Down one, two, three here in the second. We go to the bottom of the second. Still no score. And Kareem Garcia will lead things off for Buffalo, the AAA team of the Cleveland Indians at the time. 266. He's well, he is the leadoff batter of the inning, so he will get a single to center. So how about that? Kareem Garcia takes advantage of being the leadoff batter. He gets a base hit. That'll bring up Chris Coast. Went on to more notoriety with the Phillies for a few years. To 126, and that is a freshness check again. And since we're in the second inning, he is fresh, and it's a line out to second. So Chris Coast lined it hard, but right at Sexton for out number one. That'll bring up Bruce Avon, the left fielder. And Avon, how about this? A 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Bruce Avon, 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Is Fernandez an ace or star? No, he's not. Is Avon a scrapper? No, he's actually a semi-home run king. So he will hit a home run to left field. So Bruce Avon breaks the scoreless tie here in the bottom of the second with a solo shot off of Fernandez. That knuckleball didn't knuckle enough. And the Bisons take a 1-0 lead. Here's Greg LaRocca, third baseman. It's a 4-6-6. Four, six, six. Four six six is he wild? No, is he a home run king or a slugger? Greg LaRocca is a semi slugger, but the sire die says no, so he will single to left field. And he's semi active, but since we're on the same at bat, the sire die still says he's not active, so he will not steal. But it is a single by LaRocca. One out single. Here's Zach Sorensen, switch hitting shortstop. We get a 146. 146. Does the pitcher have flash? No, he does not. Is the batter a champion? No, he's not. So he'll ground to second and on a lead dive one. That's a double play. So that's four, six, three. Double play to end the bottom of the second. But thanks to the Bruce Avon home run, after two complete, it's Buffalo one and Louisville nothing. And Ben Broussard, the first baseman, steps to the plate for the Louisville Bats. 1-5-5. Is he a home run king? Ben Broussard is a semi-home run king. Desired I says he's a home run king. So Ben Broussard has just answered the Bruce Avon home run with a home run of his own as he takes a Jason Phillips fastball to the cheap seats. And we're tied at one. So just that quickly, these teams can strike. Here is Chris Sexton. you got a semi-champion batting eighth in the lineup. That tells you how good the lineup is. 1-1-3. One, 1-1-3. One, three. One, one, three. Is he an ace? He is a semi-star, but not an ace. 
Is the batter a slugger? Chris uh, Sexton is a semi-champion, but not a slugger, so he will single to center. And since he's not a home run king or a whiffer, he will, that single will stand. So Sexton with a single, still nobody out. And Corky Miller, the batter. Corky Miller could bunt, but that's no fun. So we're going to let Corky swing away. He is a semi-home run king. Four, six, six. Is he wild? No. He's a semi-home run king. Desire Dice says he's a home run king, so he will strike out. So Corky Miller. Mighty hack, but got nothing but air. One away. Anthony Sanders. Three, five, five. Is he a struggler? No, he's not. Is Sanders a champion? No, he's not. So he will ground to second, unless he's a whiffer, which he is. Anthony Sanders does have that whiffer quality, so he will strike out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts as Phillips trying to get out of this. We'll face Jason Maxwell, who never got to bat his first time up. He got grounded to short on that double control, so he never actually got a chance to, to bat. So this is his first official time, and it's a 3-5-6 roll. And since he's a righty and Phillips is a righty, that is a strikeout. So Phillips comes back to strike out the side. But Ben Broussard did, did tie it with a home run. So we go to the bottom of the third, tied at one. And catcher Tim Laker, the only man not to bat of the starters, only man not to come to the plate yet, is there now. He's there for his defense, not for his offense. One, three, four. One, three, four. Gold catcher. Uh, the catcher for Louisville is Corky Miller, and he is gold. So that is a strikeout. So. Corky Miller, being gold, gets the strikeout for Jared Fernandez. Framed that pitch very well. Knuckleball floated in there and caught the corner, and Boehner rung him up. So here's Madrano. 1-5-6. Is Madrano a whiffer? Now, Madrano has actually got a good eye. So we're going to go to outfield drama. And in the outfield for Louisville, their outfield, all their outfielders are neutral. And we get a 2-5 on the outfield drama with everyone neutral. 2-5. Center fielder iron. Nope. Gonzalez is not iron. He's neutral. So it won't be a double. He will catch the ball in a running grab. So there's two away. Madrano is retired. And that brings up second baseman Bill Selby. Fly to center his first time up. 1-2-5. One, 1-2-5. Two, five. One, two, five. Ask is Fernandez. A struggler, which he is not, is Selby patient. No, he's not patient. So he will ground to third unless he's a whiffer. Selby is a semi-whiffer. Desire Dice says he's a whiffer, so it's another strikeout. Selby down on strikes. And the third inning is over. So after three complete, it is Louisville 1 and Buffalo 1. Raul Gonzalez. Leading things off for Louisville to start the fourth. It's a 4-4-5. Four, 4-4-5. Four, five. Four, four, five. Is he a workman? No. Is he patient? Gonzalez is semi-patient. The sire die says he's patient, so he will draw a walk. A leadoff walk to Raul Gonzalez. Brings up the dangerous Kevin Witt. Dangerous Kevin Witt. And we get a 4-5-5. Five, five. So a 4-5-5 five, five asks, does he have flash? Jason Phillips has semi-flash. Desire Dice says he has flash, so it is a strikeout. So he puts the whiff on Kevin Witt, and they've gotten Kevin Witt twice on strikeouts. That'll bring up the third baseman, Brandon Larson. 1-2-5, is he a struggler? No. Is the batter patient? No, he's actually semi-eager. So we've skipped that result. He's going to ground to third unless he's a whiffer. And he just happens to be a whiffer, so that's a strikeout. Avoids that it would have, would have been a double play had he not been a whiffer. But he strikes out, leaves the run at first with two outs for Ruben Mateo. Mateo lined to second his first time up. 5-6-6. Five, 5-6-6. Six, six. Five, six, six. Is he wild? No. Does he have a good eye? No, he does not. So it is a strikeout. And so after giving up the leadoff walk, Phillips comes back and strikes out the side. 
And we go to the bottom of the fourth, still one to one. That result was in blue, so we're going to the right now chart for the first at bat of the bottom of the fourth, which is Earl Snyder. Snyder, his last time up, grounded to second, so he is neutral. And the last batter Fernandez faced was Selby, who he struck out. So we got a semi-hot pitcher against the neutral batter. And now they're both neutral on the 2-4. They're both neutral. 2-4. Hot batter. No, he's not hot batter, so he will fly to left. He will not single to over short. He will fly to left, not pass go, not collect $200. So Earl Snyder is out of there. One away for Kareem Garcia. He singled his first time up. 156 for Garcia, and that's asking if he is a whiffer. 156 asks, is Garcia a whiffer? He certainly is, so Garcia will go down on strikes for out number two. Two up, two down for Chris Coast. And Coast, his first time up, lined out to second. To 224. 224 is pitching at home. No, we're in Buffalo, not in Louisville, so Fernandez will not get that advantage. Is he a slugger? Chris Coast is a semi-slugger. Desire Dye says he's a slugger. So therefore, it's a double to left field. So Chris Coast with a two-out double. Chris Coast with the two-out eye-opening double. And here is Bruce Avon. I'll let you figure out if you can get that pun or not. All right, here's Bruce Avon. He's the one who homered his last time up. Put Buffalo on the board. 336. He's not going to do it this time, I don't believe. 336. Is he an ace? Is he an ace? No, uh, Fernandez is not an ace. Is he sad sack, utility, or patient? Well, he is semi patient. The side eye says he's patient, so he took a call, strike three. And that's going to end the inning. So the double by Coast goes for naught. And we go to the fifth, still tied at one. And Ben Broussard, he homered his first time up to tie the game. 2-3-6. 2-3-6 is that double control, and of course, Jason Phillips has it. So again, we've got a ground ball out to the pitcher and a ground out to the shortstop. So Broussard, a 1-3 ground out, and Sexton never even gets a chance to bat. He's going to ground to short automatically. And there's two outs just that way, just that quickly. Went from a walk to two outs and nobody on. Here's Corky Miller. He struck out his first time up. It's a 2 2 6, which is asking if he's hit by the pitch. The Sire Die says no, he is not. He's not the cleanup batter, so he's going to fly to left unless he's a whiffer. And we need the decider Die to determine if he's a whiffer or not. And he is. So the dot came up as a dot, so Corky Miller, for the second time, will go down on strikes. And the fifth inning is over, so we go to the bottom of the fifth, tied at one. Now Greg LaRocca will step up for the Bison, leading off against Jared Fernandez. Both pitchers by now are semi-fresh. Forgot to mention that. It's a 2-4-5. So 2-4-5, 2-4-5, blank for the pitcher. Is he a hero? Greg LaRocca. Just happens to be a hero, so he will single to left field. Leadoff single for LaRocca. He is two for two. That'll bring up Zach Sorensen, who hit into a double play his first time up. Trying to avoid that fate again. Three, four, six. Blank for the pitcher. Is he eager? Zach Sorensen does happen to be eager, so he will fly to center. And that's one away. Brings up the catcher, Tim Laker. And Laker struck out his first time up. Laker, a 2 3 6. 2 3 6. That's that double control, but Fernandez does not have it. Phillips has it. So it'll be a walk. So Tim Laker will draw a walk. Puts runners at first and second with one out for the top of the order and Anthony Majorano. So far, the umpires have been pretty quiet today. Madrano, one, two, six. Is he fresh? No, the sire die says he's not fresh. So is the batter a sad sack? No, he's not. He's going to single pass second base. That is a single pass second base. Since there's only one out, it will only be a one base advancement. So 
So the bases are now loaded with one out. And we're going to the right now chart for Bill Selby's at bat. And of course, Fernandez is now semi-cold due to that giving up the hit. And Selby is semi-cold for striking out last time up. So they're both semi-cold. And they're both going to be cold. 3-6. Cold batter against cold pitcher. It's cold pitcher. He misses the outside corner. Batter connects on a drive past third base. And on a lead die of three, that's going to score two runs. So Bill Selby with a two-run single will bring home LaRocca and Laker. And Buffalo has now grabbed a three-to-one lead with Madrano going to third base. So now runners are at the corners with only one out. And now Fernandez is considered a semi-struggler since three consecutive batters have reached. So they're going on thin ice. The bullpen is loosening as we speak. And Earl Snyder, the batter. Dangerous Earl Snyder. And even more dangerous on a 6-6-6. Earl Snyder is going to probably put this one over the fence. Uh, he's, Fernandez is not an ace. He's not a sad sack. So we got a glove check. And on the glove check, unless you have a gold fielder, it's a home run. And looking in the Louisville outfield, they have no gold outfielders. So this is a home run for Earl Snyder, a three-run shot. And they probably went with Jared Fernandez one batter too long. And it cost them another three runs. So it's now 6-1 to one Buffalo. And of course now we're going to get the bullpen, one batter too late. But that's it for Jared Fernandez. He is done for the day. As Louisville now will go to their pen. And let's see who they're going to bring in here. Looks like they're going to bring in... Pedro Feliciano. I think he had a little time with the Mets at some point, but... At this point in his career, he was in the Cincinnati chain. So Feliciano is in. He's a he's already a star with semi-flash and double control, but now he's going to be uh, an ace on this first at bat, which definitely would have prevented the home run last time. But the way it goes, here's Garcia. One, two, six. Is he fresh? Yes, he is. It's a line out to second for out number two, and Garcia is gone. Here's Chris Coast. I was hoping for a close game this time, but just didn't work out for some reason. But there's still some time, I guess. All right, one, three, five. That's the ballpark chart uh, for Duntire Park. I don't know that much about Duntire Park, so I, I'm just if I don't know for sure, I just call it neutral. So we're going to go with neutral against you know neutral to righties and neutral to lefties, and we get a six, 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 six small ballpark. Nope, it's a fly out to the warning track. So Chris Coast got into one, but not quite enough. And the fifth inning is over, but it's a five spot for Buffalo. And after five complete, it's Buffalo six and Louisville one. And Jason Phillips appreciating the run support. This is his last inning to be semi-fresh. Anthony Sanders, the leadoff hitter. Four, four, five. Four, four, five. 4-5, is he a workman? No. Is the batter patient? No, he's eager. So he will ground to first. And there's one away. And that will bring up Jason Maxwell, the shortstop. Maxwell's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. 1-4-5. Is he a struggler? No, it's a ground ball to third. So that's two away. So Jason Phillips going in here for the shutdown inning after getting that big lead. Here's Raul Gonzalez. 0 for 1 with a walk. And it's a 1 2 4, which talks about control. He's got double control, so that certainly takes care of that. It's a ground ball to short, and that's going to end the inning. Had there only been one out, then we would have had that same double ground out. But since it's the third out, that kind of closes the deal there. I'm not sure what the rules say on that, but I don't carry it over to the next inning. That's, that just doesn't seem right. So. We're just going to let it go with that. Bruce Avon, the batter. And you know what? I forgot to put in that Feliciano was in the game. So 
So let's write this in here real quick. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and remove Feliciano. He did his job as far as uh, getting out of the jam. So he's going to leave. And we're going to go to the bullpen for a little bit more of a long relief man for Louisville. And that's going to be... It's going to be Brandon Kolb. So Brandon Kolb is in. Oh, wrong spot. Brandon Kolb. He's a workman, but he will be an ace this first at bat as he faces Bruce Aven. Bruce Aven, a homer and a strikeout. Feast and famine. 2-4-4. Two, 2-4-4. Four, four. Two, four, four. Is he an ace? Yes, he is. The first bat of the game, he's an ace. So he will get the batter to fly to center. And there's one away. Brings up Greg LaRocca. La Rocca. 235 for the pitcher. Is he wild? No, he's got uh, he's got no quality on his controls. Eager. No, he's semi-patient. So he will ground to second, but if he is patient, then he will walk. The sire dive says he's patient off of that semi-patient. So a walk to Greg LaRocca. He's reached base all three times. Two singles and a walk. Brings up Zach Sorensen, the shortstop. It's a 2-5-6. Two, 2-5-6, six. Two, six. is he a struggler? No, it's a better champion or patient. He's actually eager. So it's infield drama. And on the infield for Louisville, we have Broussard is semi-gold. And uh, Larson is iron. And Sexton is semi-gold. So we got a couple semi-golds and an iron. So this could go anywhere. The shortstop, Maxwell, is the only one that's neutral. All right, so everybody's neutral except for Larson, who's iron. On infield drama, but it's a 6-6, six, six, so no telling what that's going to bring about. First baseman, gold. No, the first baseman, Broussard, is semi-gold, but the sire die says he's not gold. So it's a bungled play. Batter's safe at first on an error. So Sorensen will reach on the error by Broussard. And that puts runners at first and second with one out. For Tim Laker, the catcher. Struck out and walked. 2-6-6. Two, 2-6-6. Six, six. Two, six, six. It's not the leadoff batter. But the runner on first, he's going to get picked off. So... Sorensen got a little bit uh, chippy there. And some people play it with a runner on second like that that you're not going to get picked off. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to override that. I'm going to continue with the at-bat. Because it doesn't make sense. If you've got a runner in front of him, he's not going to stray off first base anyway. So it's just the way I've heard some people play it, and I kind of agree with them. So it's a fly out to right field. So it's an out either way, but this time the batter is out. We're out number two. So Laker is gone. Top of the order for Anthony Madrano. Madrano, 145. Ask is the pitcher a struggler? No, he's a workman, but he's not a struggler. So it's a ground out to third. Okay, so that 145, sorry about the interruption there. That 145 was a ground ball to third by Selby since the pitcher was not a struggler. Actually, by Madrano. And he grounds out to end the sixth. So we go to the top of the seventh. It is still Buffalo free handily in front, six to one. Here's the dangerous Kevin Witt. Look at his card, but he struck out twice, 0 for 2. That's a 1, 2, 3. That's both flash and fresh. He's neither flash nor fresh, but it's still going to be a ground ball to short, and that's one away. For Brandon Larson, the... Third baseman. And Larson's 0 for 2, and he's got a loaded card. 2 4 4. 2 4 4 for Phillips. Is he an ace? No. He's a better champion. Brandon Larson is a semi champion, but the sire die says no. So he's going to ground a short unless he's a whiffer, and Brandon Larson happens to be a whiffer, so he will whiff his second strikeout today. So he's out of there for two down. And I'll bring up Ruben Mateo. Mateo, 126. 
one, two, six. Ask, is he fresh? Well, he's semi. Oh, he's no longer semi fresh because we're in the seventh inning, so he's not fresh. Is the pitch a batter a sad sack? No, he's not. So he will single past second base. So Mateo gets a two out single. That result was in blue, so we're going to the next to the right now chart. Got a cold pitcher in Phillips against a neutral batter in Ben Broussard. So for the right now chart. We have a cold pitcher against a neutral batter. And it's a 3-4 on the right now chart. Cold batter. No, he's not cold. He's neutral. So he's going to fly to right rather than uh, cause his team to go in a slump for consecutive outs. He's just going to fly to right. But it's the third out of the inning anyway, so that's kind of a moot point. So, nothing doing for Louisville in the seventh. We go to the seventh inning stretch. Score is still 6-1, to one. and Bill Selby will lead things off. Colbin, his second inning of work, will now be semi-fresh. 3-4-6. Three, 3-4-6. Four, six. Three, four, six. Ask. You know, it's blank for the pitcher. It asks, is the batter eager? No, he's not eager, so he will walk. He's not active, so he won't steal, but Selby will draw a leadoff walk. And that brings up Earl Snyder who homered, had that big three-run home run last time on that 6-6-6 six, six, six roll that sent Jared Fernandez to the showers. There's a 1-3-4. And a 1-3-4. Gold catcher. Well, again, Corky Miller is gold, so it's a strikeout. Benefits of having a gold catcher. There's one away for Kareem Garcia. Garcia, a 1-2-4. 1-2-4 talks about control. He does not have control. Is the batter eager? Garcia is not eager. So he will walk. So it's another walk to Garcia. Puts runners at first and second with one away. That brings up Chris Coast. One for three with a double. And it's a 2-2-3. Two, two, 223 ask is he wild? No, he's not wild. Is he slugger or utility? Chris Coast is semi slugger, but the sire die says no. So he will not line out. He will actually single to left field. So Chris Coast with a single. Lead die of two. You have to have an active runner to score from second. And he's not active. So this will load the bases. Bases are now loaded. For Bruce Avon, who had the home run that led off the scoring. And for Louisville, they're going to go to their bullpen. They had bullpen activity, and with the bases loaded, they want an ace in there. So whoever they bring in is going to get that ace quality. And they're going to bring in... They're going to bring in... Right-hander Craig Dingman. So Craig Dingman, Dingman is a flash pitcher, but now he has an ace on his first at bat. So Dingman, we'll see if he can't stem the tide here with the bases loaded and one out against Bruce Avon. So he is an ace, this at bat. 155. 155 is the batter a home run king. Bruce Avon is a semi home run king. Desire Die says he's a home run king. So Bruce Avon has just connected on another home run. This one a three run shot. And it didn't matter what pitcher was in there this time because the pitcher got skipped on his qualities. So it is a actually a grand salami. I missed that. That's a grand slam home run. So talk about uh, ruining manager Dave Miley's day. Mr. Avon has just done that. And it is now painfully a 10 to 1 ball game. And Sorry, this one couldn't be closer. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. Here's Greg LaRocca, 3-5-6. He will get the out there because LaRocca's a righty and Dingman's a righty, so it will be a strikeout for out number two. And that brings up Zach Sorensen, the switch hitting shortstop. And we get a 1-4-4, which is talking about flash. And he has it. Dingman has flash. You go to the goggles, but Bob Bainter is not questionable or lenient, so the strikeout will stand. And I think the way the score is, he would have it stand anyway. 
So a four spot for Buffalo, and after seven complete, it's the Bisons 10 and Louisville 1. All right, top of the eighth, a new Buffalo pitcher. It's going to be Jared Riggin. He's already a semi-ace, but now he'll be an ace and a half. And he has flash and control. And he'll get to face number eight hitter Chris Sexton. Sexton's one for two. And it's a two, I'm oh, sorry, one, two, five. One, two, five, he's not a struggler. He is the batter patient. No, he's not. So he will ground to third. He's not a whiffer, so the ground out will hold. It's a 5-3 ground out, one away for Kirk Corky Miller. Corky Miller. 2-4-6 for Corky Miller. But first of all, is asking, does Riggin have control? And yes, he does. Riggin does have the control quality. So it's a ground ball back to Riggin. And there's two away just that quickly for Anthony Sanders. So Anthony Sanders, 1-1-5, one, one, ask, is he fresh? He certainly is. It's a pop out too short to end the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's still a 10-1 ball game. And like I said, normally wouldn't do this on a regular season game. But since it's an exhibition, they're going to go ahead and bring in uh, <clears throat> their closer, Mike New. Mike New, N-E-U, Mike New. Mike New is in to pitch for Louisville. He is their fifth pitcher of the game. He will see if he can get through the eighth inning unscathed. He'll be facing number nine hitter, Tim Laker, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. He is an ace this at bat. It's a good thing. 5-5-5. Five, five, five. The ace takes care of that. And that's going to be a simple fly out to right field. So that averted a home run, most likely. So that'll bring up Anthony Madrano. His fifth at bat. He's one for four. Single to run scored. We get a 4 4 6 for Madrano. Well, first for New. 4 4 6. Is he a star? New is not a star. Is he sad sack, utility, or patient? He is semi utility, but the sire die says no. So he's going to get a single to right field. And But he's not active, so. He's only semi-active. The sire die says no. So it's a one-out single. Plus, you wouldn't steal when you're up 10 to 1. I mean, that's, that would be really rubbing it in, so to speak. Here's Bill Selby. 1-1-4. One, one, that is a freshness check. He is fresh. It's a ground ball to short, and that's going to be a 6-4-3 double play to end the bottom of the eighth. So we go to the ninth as Louisville <laughs> has their work cut out for them down by the score of 10-1. to 1. And just for the heck of it, Buffalo's going to bring in their closer, Sean DePaula. So Sean DePaula is in. Riggin pitched one, one, two, three inning, so he certainly had no issues. And now DePaula is in. DePaula will be an ace this first at bat as he's facing Jason Maxwell. Gonzalez and Witt. You got two numbers two, three, and four coming up. Apollo has flash and semi-control and he's an ace this first at bat. So one five six. One five six ask is the batter a whiffer? Maxwell is a semi-whiffer. Desired I says he's a whiffer, so Maxwell goes bye-bye. So Maxwell wasn't very smart on that particular bat, and he is out of there. He is 86th from the batter's box. And here's Raul Gonzalez. Yes, when it's the score like this, you got to come up with something to try to be entertaining. Four six six. Is he wild? No. Is he a home run king or a slugger? Raul Gonzalez is a slugger, so he will strike out. He will strike out. So another strikeout. Gonzalez is gone, and here's Kevin Witt. He's zero for three, and he struck out twice, despite being a semi hero, semi slugger, and a semi home run king. It is a five five six. Five five six. Is he an ace? No, he's not. Is he a sad sack? No, he's not. So it's a double to right field for Witt. So finally, some offense out of Kevin Witt. Too little, too late. It's a two out double. And I'll bring up Brandon Larson. He's also struck out twice despite being a hero, semi champion, and a home run king. Four five six. That's probably going to do it. Four five six. Is he patient? No, he's actually semi eager. So he will fly to center. And the ball game is over.
Some of you, if you're still around, thank you. You're probably saying mercifully over. But uh, a 10 to 1 thrashing. And it looked good for four innings. It was 1 to 1, but then all heck broke loose. And uh, that's just the way it goes. So that's another edition of International League Baseball. I, so far, I haven't, uh, I'm not selling it too well, am I? Because I've played two games and they've been blowouts. But, you know, that can happen in any game, I suppose. But just mainly just uh, putting it out there, showing you how they play. And uh, just something a little different. It's kind of an in-between between the fictional set and the major league set because these are real players. They're just playing in the minor leagues. So that's going to do it from here. Hope everybody enjoyed that. And uh, like I said, if anybody's interested, if you can let me know how to put this on a Google Drive, I'll do it. Um, if I should email Keith with all the files, I can do that too. Or if anybody wants them individually, I'll be happy to email them to you. Just let me know. And uh, that's going to do it from here. I probably need to uh, work on my spacing here to make the, the win-loss record more clean like this one is on top. I can probably lower this logo, so I could you, you can tweak it or play with it if you want. Um, depends on how you want to, how much time you want to invest in something like that. But uh, anyway, that's going to do it from here. Hope everybody in, is having a wonderful Saturday and enjoying whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And I will get back now to my Atlanta Braves. I'm behind schedule thanks to the dental work that I had last week, and I was kind of kind of out of it for the most part last week. So uh, I've got some catching up to do, as they say. So I need to get busy on that so I can get caught up and get everything back on schedule to where I would like it to be. So until next time, we will see everybody down the road.